It's really interesting, Cheslin, because, you know, your, your story is one that has, I suppose, has generated some interest, but I, I've, I've never heard you speak about it before. Um, you know, and a lot of people in this part of the world will, will know you from standing on the podium with a World Cup winner's medal around your neck and seeing what you do week in, week out for Toulouse. I just wonder if we could elaborate a bit more. I mean, from standing on the top of the world in your sporting, the sporting greatness that you've now achieved to, to where it all began. I mean, can you tell me a little bit more? You touch on the drugs, et cetera. You obviously were very well supported by your family, but tell me more about the community that you grew up in and, and whether that was a frightening experience, whether it was just what you knew, whether it was something you always wanted to escape and sort of how that sits with you now, how often you think about it. Because I have so many friends and family, obviously, back home, uh, I definitely think about it probably most of the time, uh, each and every day, because, man, the way I grew up was, obviously, as I mentioned, the drug abuse, the crime, uh, gangsterism. I think as a young kid playing in the streets, uh, and all of a sudden, all the years, just gunshots and people, like, firing Bullets in, in daylight, um, it's definitely scary. Um, it's things you, I've seen with my own eyes. It's things that I wouldn't want any other young kid to, to, to experience as well, if you can put it that way. But yeah, that's, that's just the way uh, I grew up. Um, a community where obviously gangsterism, gangsterism has been massive with, the gang wars, uh, the drugs, and gangs just fighting each other in daylight, um, fighting, fighting each other with, with guns. Um, literally, you at night, you also have to wonder, like, whatever that sound is, if it's a gunshot, if it's someone's car's tire that exploded or something, and most of the times it's definitely been gunshots. And there's been at times where whenever you, you get home and the next morning you... you find out the story that either some your neighbor or someone in your street has been killed because of either misfiring, not being involved in gang gangsterism, but just being either somewhere at the wrong time but getting caught in that um, kind of uh, gang wars. It's, it's, it's really difficult, uh, especially when you see it's people that's not involved in those kind of uh, situations and for their families to obviously lose someone close to them, um, it's, it's, it's really difficult. And for me, just obviously most of my friends uh, back home uh, that I grew up with uh, and going back in last year during the lockdown period, obviously uh, being blessed to, to be back in South Africa for the, for the lockdown and, and the whole COVID pandemic, um, I had opportunity to obviously go out with the foundation um, that I'm part of to, to serve and give hope to, to other people. And man, like wherever I go, uh, in whichever community, like there's so many people that I recognize that I grew up with that they basically don't have anything. Um, they're standing on the streets, asking for a bit of help, asking for money, asking for food, asking for clothes, asking for, for something just to, to either get into their stomach or just to, to pull over their head to keep themselves warm. Um, at times, us as, as professional athletes, uh, we, we take for granted for, for the, the little we have. Or the, the more we have in life, we actually do complain about having more and more and more. Um, but I think that definitely opened up my eyes because... Man, you can't complain about anything as a professional athlete. There's, there's people out there that's 10 times worse than what we are. Um, and they just out there fighting and hoping uh, to survive for the next day or survive the day they're in. 